Hello, Pearl. Hello, everyone. Um, I, this is a great opportunity to introduce to you Pearl Finlay James, who's president of the Rotary Club of Bensdale Sunrise in our district 9820. And she chairs a committee which uh, has been very, very busy, as you well understand, uh, earlier this year from the terrible fires uh, up at East Gippsland in our district. So, Pearl, welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and Thank you I'm for sorry. the opportunity. Yeah, I'm sorry we didn't have the opportunity to conference uh, because, of course, for various reasons, we don't have one of those this year. Um, I missed out on a new gown, a new dress. Yes, and now <laughs> a new haircut. <laughs> so this is for our clubs, of course, who've uh, been very supportive and a bit of an update. So um, perhaps I could kick off with just uh, a bit of an idea about how what your role is in the East Gippsland Rotary Fire Aid and what Rotary is doing. Okay, thanks Tim. Well, first of all, hello everyone, and I'm glad of the opportunity to speak today. And thank you, Tim, for inviting me. So my role, yes, I chair the East Gippsland Rotary Fire Aid Committee. And in that we meet at the moment on a Zoom meeting, like everybody else, Zoom has become very popular and in our space. That way we can still uh, operate successfully. So my role, look, I'm first point of contact for the referrals coming through. We have Gippsland Lakes Complete Care, which are dealing with a lot of the fire affected uh, survivors, as well as other people in the community that know of Rotary and they're doing personal referrals as well. So my role is to, to be the point of contact. My phone number is out there along with my email address. I also attend meetings on behalf of the committee uh, as a representative. So we get our perspective on the table and we can suggest the way things go forward. One of those meetings has seen me become involved with all of the case managers within Gippsland Lakes Complete Care. I now get invited fortnightly to their meetings for an update on how they're going and what's changed within our group. So th that can help them on what's available for assistance for their clients. Uh, what else do I do? I do have a little cheat sheet here, so please excuse me if I keep looking to the left. Um, I'm also the conduit for information. So the Shire will contact me now that we are in um, yeah, communication. It's taken a long time to get to the point where we have now open communication between myself and the CEO and the bushfire recovery manager. It, it's been a hard journey, but they do send messages. Let me know when things are changing within the Shire. So, so that's a, a big plus for us being recognized in that format. Mm -hmm. And the other one is I'm responsible for the shipping container program that has been dragging on for four months and yes I often dream about shipping containers and uh, anyway it's a story unto itself and it's still evolving as we're going along now. So that really is my role, it's a full-time role within uh, a full-time day uh, of trying to live a life normally. Mm, thank you um, and we know the devastation was just terrible um, I've got a couple of photos here that you may talk to, but I guess everyone's probably pretty interested in how um, well, the funding, how it worked and how you received it, and I guess how you've used it. Now, that's a loaded question. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. okay. It's a question we get off, often asked. <laughs> and, of course, we received no funding at all from the government. The government decided they'd um, make the two charities, um, the Red Cross and the Salvation Army. So we started off at uh, Ground Zero with funding. Uh, as soon as uh, we came together as a group on the 1st of January this year, when a lot of people were nursing hangovers, we were actually mm -hmm. sitting around a committee table saying, where to from here? And by the 2nd of January, I was already putting forward my first grant application to Rawks. 
So that gave us some seed funding for the want of a better word. Now I always get my grants mixed up, so I am gonna to refer to my notes. And um, so we had, we were successful in the grant application for compassionate grant for disaster relief and recovery. That was the first one got us off the ground. Mm -hmm. Then we had a Rorks grant. And then we've had a Rorks bushfire grant, which has come because fires started to break out everywhere. Rorks decided rather than have individuals, they'd make one big grant. And then people could specify who they wanted their money to go to through the Rorks donations. So that's where our grants money came from. But I must, first and foremost, I've got to thank each and every Rotary Club within a 9820 and all of Victoria, interstate and even internationally, because you have all kept us afloat. The, the money has been coming through, it is fantastic. And to name you all, I, I'm sure I'd miss somebody or I'd be here for a lot longer, but mm -hmm. that is where our money has come from. And thank you all so very much. It, you, may, you probably will never meet the people that you have helped and they will not, they'll never meet you, but between us as the conduit, they know where that money's come from. So thank you very much. The second part of your, um, I will say we've gotten more grants in the, in the pipeline. With the aid of my uh, grant queen, as I call her, which is Jan Spears, past mm -hmm. district governor, um, she's uh, head down at the moment, finalizing three global grants uh, with the assistance of Adrian Froggart. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get those as well. That'll be really exciting to, to get three. And we've got those tagged for, for specific purposes as you do with a global grant. Sure. Um, with all of this money coming in, you're saying, well, what are you doing with it? All right, so we're dispersing funds. Uh, as people are referred to us. So we have a, what I call a, my first responders. They're committee members that meet with uh, the survivors and just sit down and talk to them. There's no form filling. That's the one thing we were trying to avoid. And we were doing our own assessments to try and, and see where they were going. So to date, we've got $168,000 in the community wow in money vouchers. So these money vouchers have been formulated. They're very neat, discreet, and we have also window stickers. So all the participating retailers have a sticker in their windows that says that they accept these vouchers. And then the people can go in, shop um, accordingly to their voucher values, hand the vouchers over. So not all that money has been used up yet, but it's out there in the community. Probably because of lockdown, it slowed it. The, the vouchers have a two win-win uh, approach. One, it's giving assistance to the fire survivors, but two, it's giving assistance to the retailers because you'll um, imagine that the retail community in East Gippsland has been hit very hard. So this is giving money back in, so it's circulating. We've got food and uh, hay fodder um, and high protein fodder going out to cattle. So at the moment, we've got about $67,000 worth of fodder out there. A lot of the feed has been donated. Colac area, all areas that have got an excess because we've gone from drought to fire. So people, we already had a database for drought relief and we've encompassed that drought relief in now with the fire because most people that were drought affected are also fire affected. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the hay was donated. However, we've been helping out by paying for the cartage. And then we've got an emergency fund and there's about 28, 30,000 being used in that so far, whether that be because we get a phone call that somebody is in dire straits for something and uh, we can do a quick round, email round of approval and we can do an emergency a disbursement of funds. So that's a fair amount of money that, that is in the community and it's come out of donations. 
So um, thank you to everyone. And, and look, we're still, we still have some funding, but obviously these grants are helping us as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and then we have a virus, a pandemic. We oh my goodness, do. those poor people up there. How are you finding their, um, their uh, mental health? Have you had much to do with that area? Or? Uh, we're actually, that's going to be one of the global grants looking for mental health. We have identified it and the East Gippsland Shire are, are aware of it as well. It, it is massive, the, the mental mm. health uh, problem, it, because yeah. we've gone from drought to fire to virus. Yeah. And we're not even going to use the other, other F word, which is flood. Uh, oh, because, yeah, we won't mention that. <laughs> we'll bypass it and we'll go back to virus. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, within the virus, um, for thank heavens, we're, we have been very good in our lockdown up here in East Gippsland. And there are, there's only been one case acknowledged treated and recovered in East Gippsland. But we're still doing the social distancing. It has affected the way we operate. Mm. Uh, a lot of our, our consultations now are taking place by telephone. However, I have an office space here in Bensdale and this meeting room I'm sitting in now can certainly give a 1.5 meter safe distance and we do meet some of, the, uh, some of our survivors in here and we can still make the cup of coffee, have the piece of cake uh, and talk with them in a relaxed way. But the unfortunate thing with the virus is prevented our volunteer groups. Everybody was in, you know, in 9820 and all the other groups were itching to come up and help us in some format, but because of the lockdown, we can't. Blaze Aid have had to leave the area and they were doing an amazing job with the fencing, of course. We do still have some clearing up of the properties. Uh, that's slowing as well because people are very wary who's coming onto their property. But we are in a recovery mode and we're getting the work done. A lot of our, you can see on the slides here, we've been doing a lot of community barbecues. They've had to be um, put on the back burner Again, it, it's, we're raring to go. It's just needing the lifting uh, to a gentler uh, lockdown uh, area and we'll be able to start functioning again. One of the photos on the screen I'd like to acknowledge is a tree stump that has been painted humorously and it's acknowledging the working team partnership of DELP in the green and the CFA in the yellow because DELP could only as land work on the public lands and CFA can only work within the private properties. So this was saying that they're working tightly together, uh, which has okay. worked very, very well. And yeah, well, uh, just amazing. But the, the virus unfortunately has had a, a major impact. It's had a bit of an impact for us on donations as well because uh, so many clubs were going to have things organized, fundraising events, and they've not been, they've just been postponed for a while. So gee, it's gonna be a big party time when Mr. Dan Andrews lifts everything. It'll mm -hmm. all be in party mode for months. Thank you very much. Just uh, to sum up then, the future of the committee's work? Yes, we, we've got another 18 months at least ahead of us. We still have people that are homeless. I've got access to some refurbished caravans that are coming through. Hopefully the first two will arrive next week. So that's still on the cards. Swinburne University were offering us sheds that were being built by the students and then flat packed and trailered up here. Of course, the university is closed. So, so again, everything has been pushed back. So we'll all be running around like um, uh, bees in a bottle where, when it all comes get Winter is coming on. Mm -hmm. I know Jan Spears has put a call out to clubs for uh, certain clubs for beanies uh, because gee, it's cold out there. We've got some volunteers that have stayed behind and they're working in the Buchan area at the moment and uh, some beanies and winter gear 
is the sort of thing. So Jan did uh, an emergency trip yesterday to drop off some work gear to them. So we're, we're still in the space. Another 18 months, we want to see everybody, at least all the money gone that, that, we've, that has been donated and then people starting to build that we're actually in that space at the moment where the early people were that came to us are now in the point where they're getting ready to, to start their rebuild and then we're getting others that are just coming out of uh their wombat hole without being a raw material term they're now just ready to face it the weather's getting colder and they recognize they've got to do something it's not going to go away so that's where we're at now um, thank you, Pearl. I think we might call it quits then. And thank you very much on behalf of our clubs, our district, uh, to your work of your, on the committee and of course to your committee and of course to all your clubs. Fantastic effort. And thank you thank for you. holding this. And we'll get this to clubs so they can use it for their meetings if they wish. Thank Talk you, Tim. Thank you.